Today we'll be revising coordinate geometry. So let's start with the formulas first. So if we look at the first formula, look at the first formula, that's a gradient formula. That says m equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now the variable m is used to denote the gradient. And let's assume that we have coordinates a, which is x1 and y1, and coordinates b, which are x2 and y2. So now let's assume a, let's assume that a has the value of 3 and negative 4, and b is 2 and negative 1. So now if we were to use these coordinates to find the gradient for the line a, b, we would do m equals to negative 1 minus negative 4 over 2 minus 3 which is negative 1 plus 4 over negative 1 and that is 3 over negative 1 which basically equals to negative 3. So this is how you find the gradient whenever you have been given two points. Now if we move on to the distance formula Let's so be able to find the distance of the point AB. Distance of AB. So we're going to use the same coordinates again. Negative 1 minus negative 4 whole square plus 2 minus 3 whole square. Negative 1 minus negative 4 is going to be negative 1 plus 4 whole square. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 whole square. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So 3 whole square plus 1, which is 9 plus 1, and that equals to root 10. So this, this is the distance of AB. And that's how we use the distance formula. Next, we move on to the midpoint. So if we were to find the midpoint of A, B, A is 3, negative 4, and B was 2, negative 1. So what we would do is, midpoint would equal to Two plus three over two, comma, negative one minus four over two. That's going to be five over two and negative five over two. So that is the midpoint of the line AB. Now moving on to the slope intercept form. For the slope intercept form, what we do is let's say we use the same points AB. So first we start with finding the gradient of AB. Gradient of AB is what we've already found, which is negative three. So we do y equals to mx plus c, replace m with negative three. So we have negative three x plus c. Now we need to find the value of c. So what you can do is you can substitute either a or b in this equation. So let's say I'm going to put A. So A was 3, negative 4. So when you put 3, negative 4 in our equation, we have negative 4 equals to negative 3 times 3 plus C, which is negative 4 equals to negative 9 plus C. And that is negative 4 plus 9 equals to C, which is 5. So that means y equals to negative 3x plus 5. This is our slope intercept form for the line that connects A and B. So if we have been given a point in a gradient, then we move on to the next formula, which is y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. Let's suppose we have a question where it says that we have a point A, which is negative five and two. And we 
and the slope of the line that A passes through is negative 3. If we were to find the line of equation for this, we would do y minus 2 equals to negative 3 times x minus x, x minus negative 5. So we have y minus 2 equals to negative 3x minus 15. Why minus 15? Because negative with minus 5 becomes positive 5 and positive 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So y equals to negative 3x minus 15 plus 2 and y is negative 3x minus 13. That is your line of equation when you have a point and the slope given. When you have two points given, then you can just directly use the y equals to mx plus c formula, which is the slope intercept form. Now talking about the gradient, gradient is basically the steepness of a slope. We have different types of lines and each type of line has a different type of a gradient. So if you look at the first line, which is the vertical line, let's assume that this is x equals to two. So if our line is a vertical line and has the value of x equals to two, if we were to find the gradient for this, now if you look at this from over here, let's pick two y values. So I'm going to pick this and then I'm going to pick this. So over here, let's say y is 3 and over here y is 0. So our gradient for this is going to be 3 minus 0 over 2 minus 2. Why 2 minus 2? Because for both these values of y, value of x remains the same. Value of x is not changing. The only thing changing is value of y. So now our denominator is 0. And as we know, whenever the denominator is 0, your value is undefined. So which means gradient of a vertical line is always undefined. Gradient of a vertical line is always undefined. Now moving on to the horizontal line. Let's assume this line is y equals to 1. Now let's pick two x values. So I'm going to pick this. And I'm going to pick this. So let's say this is x equals to negative 1 and this is x equals to 1. So m would be 1 minus 1 over 1 minus negative 1. Now 1 minus 1 is 0 and 1 plus 1 over here is going to be 2. So 0 over 2 is going to be equal to 0 which means the gradient of a horizontal line is always zero. Horizontal line is always zero. Now moving on to slant lines. So if you look at the purple line, as the value of x increase, your values of y decrease. So let's assume this is your point 0, 2, and this is 2, 0. So we find the gradient for the blue, for the purple line. I'm just going to write the formula in purple. M would be 2 minus 0 over 0 minus 2 which is 2 over negative 2, which equals to negative 1. So the purple line has a negative slope. Because as one value is increasing, the other is decreasing. Now, if you look at the other one, the blue line, so let's say this is 0, negative 2. 
and this over here is 2 1 so I find the gradient for this m is going to be 1 minus negative 2 over 2 minus 0 which is 1 plus 2 over 2 and that equals to 3 over 2. Now as you can see the slope is positive this time. So as 1 as the value of x is increasing so is the value of y. So this is why this line has a positive slope and the other line has a negative slope. So what we have is parallel lines and perpendicular lines. So if you look at parallel lines, parallel lines are basically those lines which never meet. So they don't intersect. So they don't intersect. So if they're not intersecting, that means their gradient is also going to be equal. So whatever the gradient of line 1 is, which is going to be the value of m1, is going to be the same as the value of m2, which is the gradient of line 2. But if you look at perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines do intersect. They intersect. Angle at intersection is 90 degrees. is 90 degrees which you can see and gradient so the condition for the gradient in this case is that your product of m1 and m2 will always equal to negative one this is how you will identify or prove perpendicular lines to prove parallel lines you will show that both the gradients are equal for the lines given so if you look at a question let's say we have a line 3x plus y equals to 3 and 9x plus 3y equals to 1. So now if we rearrange the first equation into slope intercept form, that is going to be y equals to negative 3x plus 3. And if we rearrange the second equation, that's going to be 3y equals to negative 9x plus 1. And we're going to make y the subject. So y equals to negative 9 over 3 x plus 1 over 3, which is basically going to be y equals to negative 3 x plus 1 over 3. Now, if we look at the gradients in both the cases, negative 3 over here and negative 3 over here as well. So since the gradients are equal, that means yes line 1 and line 2 are parallel. But if we talk about the perpendicular lines now, we have a question that says that line 1, which has the equation of y equals to negative 1 over 3x plus 2. We have to find the gradient of the line of the perpendicular line. That's what we have to find. So what we'll do is we'll first identify the gradient of the first line. So that's negative 1 over 3, the coefficient of x. So once you've identified that gradient, we use m1 times m2 equals to negative 1 formula. Negative 1 over 3 times m2, which is going to be the gradient of the other perpendicular line, equals to negative 1 m2 is going to be negative 1 times 3 over negative 1, which is equal to positive 3. So if you multiply negative 1 over 3 and 3, we get negative 1. So this shows that these two lines are perpendicular and what the gradient is of the line perpendicular to line 1. So this is all of like, you know, this is basically everything that you need to know in coordinate geometry, like all of the basic formulas, how to apply them, and you know, what like each type of line represents and what's going to be the gradient for that. We'll be further discussing more questions in the upcoming videos. Hope you understand everything and let me know if you have any confusions.